Number four, Louise Upston. Thank you, Mr Speaker. My question is to the Minister for the Environment and asks, what steps has the government taken to improve the management of fresh water and how does this compare with actions taken historically? Mr Mr. Speaker, the government announced a national policy statement on fresh water management yesterday that will require all councils to set limits on both water quality and minimum flows. This is the third NPS adopted by this government and compares to just one in nine years under both uh, previous governments since the RMA was active. We have also announced increases in fresh water clean-up funding that will see this government in its first five years spend five times as much as in the preceding five years on clean-ups. We have doubled the fines for non-compliance. We have actually increased by double the number of consents non-compliance prosecutions. This combination of a clear national policy, increased funding for clean-ups, as well as tougher enforcement, are the key ingredients to making sure we manage our rivers and lakes and make sure they are managed properly. Louise Upston. Supplementary question to the Minister. How does the government's reform package fit with the blue-green objective of balancing economic growth with yeah, yeah. environmental protection? The Hon. Dr Nick Smith. Mr Speaker, this government sees New Zealand abundant freshwater resources as an important competitive advantage for New Zealand and looks to schemes like the Opua built in the 1990s as a good example of how well-designed and balanced schemes can provide both economic and environmental benefits. That is why the Government announced yesterday funding of $35 million for ensuring schemes are well designed and to get them to investment ready stage, and a proposal for $400 million of equity investment to support water storage. New Zealand only uses 2 per cent of its total water resource, and the challenge is to store water when it is in plentiful to use it in times and areas of drought. Brendan Burns. Supplementary question to the Minister. Given his Cabinet paper on the MPS on freshwater says though councils are to implement it by December 2014, quote, if it is impractical to meet this deadline, unquote, councils will have until December 2030, doesn't this mean 16 long years before our birthright of safe, clean water has any real chance of being restored? The Honourable uh, Dr Mr. Nixon. Speaker. Uh, no, that's incorrect. In fact, those parts of the NPS are exactly those that were recommended by the Board of Inquiry about the practical time frame. And I simply ask members opposite to reflect on the progress that we have made in three years and that not one single step was taken by the previous government with respect to a national policy statement uh, on fresh water that I think most members, including a broad group of 48 groups, say is overdue. Brendan Burns. Will the Minister confirm that whereas the draft NPS required conditions be imposed on all discharge permits affecting fresh water to protect the environment, his version simply requires councils to have regard to any adverse effect? And did he have to be waterboarded by the pro growth cabal and cabinet before he agreed to this weakening of environmental protection? Mr. Speaker, Dr. Nick Smith. I'd like to share with the House the specific advice that I received from the Ministry for the Environment, and it says this: These provisions are ultra-virus because an NPS can only contain objectives and policies. They would also be unenforceable because only a rule in a plan or a provision in the RMA can require any person to get a consent for a specific activity. They would also create an internal conflict between the approach that's taken in plans and the NPS. They are the reasons that the government changed those portions of the Board of Inquiry report. Brendan Burns. Could I ask if the Minister will table that advice, please? Sorry, what was that? Was that a point of order? Yes, point of order, sir. I ask if the Minister is going to table that advice from the Ministry. Well, the no order. A member can only make that request if the Minister is quoting from an official document. I'll check with the Minister. Was the Minister, the Minister was not quoting from an official document. The Dr Russell Norman supplementary question. Uh, thank you, Mr Speaker. Uh, will the Minister release the legal opinion on which the Ministry for the Environment's advice of ultra-virus is based? 
Uh, the Honourable Dr Nixon. Uh, Mr Speaker, I'd be happy to consult, as is the long-standing convention of Cabinet, to consult with the Attorney-General and to see whether there are any legal risks and subject to the advice of the Attorney-General uh, that it does, doesn't pose any legal risk for the Crown, I'd be more than happy to release that advice. Question number five.